Okay, so number one, I notice that I have a marking on my picture. I have a right angle marking, so that's a clue to me. What would my strategy be to solve for these missing angles? Well, I know that these are both have words. These angles are com plus, there we go. These are complementary angles because of that right there. Now that I know that they're complementary, to solve this problem, I'm going to add those two expressions tomorrow, whatever they are, and add them to equal 90, and then solve for x. So what do you do in number one? Do you set them equal? No. Are they 45, 45? No. You add them to equal 90. Complementary is the reason why. Okay, number two. Uh, I need a reason. I need to know what those angles are. Yes, those are adjacent, but they're more than adjacent. They are a linear pair. And I know by the linear pair theorem, I know that those add to equal 180 because if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So in this one, I would add these to equal 180. I would not set them equal. Their, their sum is 180, so they're supplementary. Okay, number three. Um, on this one, I don't have any markings. I don't have arcs. I don't have a right angle. I don't have a straight line. Those are plain old adjacent angles and nothing else. So in number three, I'm going to use the angle addition postulate, the AAP. <laughs> part plus part equals whole. And that's all there is to that one. That's a simple angle addition. That's how you start those problems. Part plus part equals whole. And then the rest is algebra, of course. Number four, I see some intersecting lines. I see the letter X. When you have the letter X, when you have two intersecting lines, you always have a pair of vertical angles. So what I would do first here is I would set X equal to Y. I'm allowed to do that because of the vertical angle theorem. It says if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. So I would set x equal to y. I would find out what the angles are. And then let's say I know this angle. I know it now. How would I find z? I know to find z, I could add z and y to equal 180, or I could just subtract y from 180 because they are a linear pair. Linear pair is zero. So in this picture, you would use the VAT, the vertical angle theorem, and the LPT the linear pair theorem in one problem. Okay, last set of strategy slides, number five and six. There's a symbol on these pictures that didn't show up on the other slides. I see arcs. Arcs means something has happened. Arcs means that this is not just a plain old ray. Arcs mean that that ray is an angle bisector. So because the angle has been bisected, not because of vertical angles, but because the angle's been bisected, I can just set x equal to y and move along my merry way, right? Okay, number six, we have two choices. Once again, we have an angle bisector problem, but they gave us different information. They gave us x, which is half, and they gave us y, which is the entire angle. So, yes, you have two choices. You can double the half to equal the whole, or... You can set the half equal to half of the whole. So double the half or half the whole. You never do both. You just pick one of those. Okay. All right, let's try this problem. We have ABC is 5X plus 4. DBC is 66. So you know you will for sure get one like this tomorrow because this is a basic angle addition problem. So we do part. 5x plus 4 plus part 66 equals whole angle addition posture. So we have 5x plus 70. All right, we're good. Subtract 5 from both sides. 70 equals 8x plus 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. 64 equals 8x. X is 8. Then we plug it back in to find ABD. 5 times 8 plus 4. 
The final answer, 44. All right, this one's a little bit different. Find X so that Ray and AB bisect ABE. So here's ABE, and we want to force this to be an angle bisector. We want those angles to be congruent. Arc, arc. Force them to be a bisector. means force the angle to be cut in half. Now, if it's perfectly cut in half, then those would be matching. Those would both have arcs. Those would be twins. So, now what we're going to do is add all these up. But what do we set it equal to? You always are looking for straight lines. Anytime you see a straight line, you have a number that's not labeled on your picture. You have 180. Very good. Let's add up all the answers. 3 plus 3 plus 2. 8x minus 4x plus 2. Minus 13, minus 13, so it's minus 26, plus 6, so minus 20, equals 180. So this is the sum of all three of those angles, the sum of the three, and they make a straight line. They add up to 180. Okay, so add 20 to both sides. 8x equals 200, divide by 8, x is 25. So you had to be kind of creative in that problem. So that was a good problem, testing your knowledge on bisectors. All right, in this problem, we want to find x so that a is perpendicular to b. Perpendicular means they meet at a 90 degree angle. So we are finding x to force these angles to be complementary. There we go. They should add to equal 90. I'm not going to show the algebra on this one this time. Okay, um, let me clear this. I'm going to have to mark it up again. Okay, so we knew that this angle was 7x minus 40, that this angle was 2x plus 85, and we wanted to find the measure of EFB. So what we wanted to do here is make sure that we see a straight line, right? So you look for we see a straight line. Looks like that's happening a lot. So we know that these, both have words, are linear pair. They are adjacent, and they are supplementary. They are a linear pair. So we're going to add them up. 7x minus 40 plus 2x plus 85 equals 180. What did you get when you found x? Okay, so we get x is 9 maybe, hopefully. Um, it's not just asking for x, it's asking for efg. So what we can do, this angle right here, I'll show you this. What we can do is take 9 and plug it in here. Okay, we couldn't skip it. We couldn't skip all that work. Okay, so we solved the problem, and we got x is 15. And what we can do is plug the 15 in here. 2 times 15 plus 85. And we get that this angle is 115. Well, we used up 90 degrees. So we can do a subtraction problem, 115 minus 90. And the final answer is 25. So that was multi-step. You had to add them to equal 180. Then you had to solve for x. Then you had to plug it in. Then you had to subtract 90. This one is definitely a K-level problem. It's a little bit deeper thinking. ABC and CBD form a linear pair. So we draw two angles that form a linear pair. I notice what letters they have in common. BC, DC. So I know BC is the ray that they have in common. A, B, C, and C, B, C form a linear pair. Check. I drew a picture. Did y'all draw that same picture? Did you make sure it had a straight line, two angles? Okay. B, E bisects A, B, C. So draw an angle bisector, call it B, E, and put arc, arc. B, F bisects C, B, D. Draw an angle bisector, call it B, F. And I can't use a single arc. Now I need to use a double arc. Now normally I tell you in a problem like this, just call the smallest thing x and work from there. Okay, go ahead. So if I call this x, then I would call this x, oh no, but now I don't know what to call the other two. Because I don't really know what they are in relation to those. So that one kind of didn't work sometimes, that doesn't work. What I would do next is make up a number. And yes, you're allowed to make up a number, because we weren't given any numbers. So, I'll make up, I'll try 20 degrees. 
that angle is 20, and that angle is 20. And could you find those other two angles? 180 minus, how many have we used? 40. And then 5 seconds divided by 2. So that would be 140 divided by 2 would be 70. So what's the measure of EDF? What is so cool about this problem is that no matter what number you choose, and I could show you the algebra of it, but I'm not going to, whatever number you chose, your two numbers that added that landed there, 70 and 20, would add up to 90 every time, all the time, no matter what angle measure you chose, as long as it was, um, I guess as long as it was stipulated it had to be less than 180. Okay, so the answer to that one was 90. Alright, the measure of an obtuse angle is 5x plus 6. Give the range of possible values of x. Okay, so we know obtuse. We know that obtuse has to be greater than 90, but in this class we don't go past 180, so less than 180. So we put our angle in there. That is step one. You'll see it tomorrow. Make sure you know how to do this. You put the angle in the middle. And then you write the min and the max that the angle could be. The min and the max. Okay. Now, you solve for x just like you would any equation. If this is 5x plus 6, to get rid of the 6, you subtract 6. But the cool part is you do it to both sides. So now we have, what, 84 is less than 5x is less than 174. And then now, how do you get rid of the 5? You divide by 5. And it's ugly. I didn't make this problem pretty. Sorry about that. 84 divided by 5. 16.8 is less than x. 174 divided by 5, which is less than 34.8. Cool. Please do every single problem of your review. Check your answers online. Let me know if you see any mistakes. Good luck tomorrow.